Well, it's working at the Tony Wilson Fishing Show. Now, one of the problems we have, I think, in UK beach fishing is, a lot of guys go down there, they see the sea, the open ocean, you bait up, you cast out. Now, you need to think of places like features, rocks, jetties, piers. Also, don't forget, tidal flow. And I think a great fish catching area is where there's some tidal flow, just some movement. And I got thinking about this more and more because when I go boat fishing, we've got plenty of tide. There's always a big body of water. And if your bait's on the seabed, don't forget the smell off of that bait is just wafting away down tide. So any fish, you know, crossing that scent trail can work his way up till he finds a source, your hook bait, and you should get a take. Now, conversely, if you're on the shore, you might have a great big wide open beach area and there's very little tidal flow. So when you think about it, your bait's just sitting down there. Some of the smell off of that bait, whichever bait you've got, sort of just dissipates, doesn't it? Say, say over a period of half an hour, if the crabs don't find it, it spreads out like this. How far is it gonna go? Two, three feet in an hour? There's gonna be a little bit of tidal flow, but generally, if there's a, a bit of current taking that smell away from the fish, and I've got to thinking about some of the better places I've gone shore fishing, even with other people, they've been where there's a bit of flow, a good bit of current. So anyway, well, the, the way, this is the theory. I'm trying to think sort of boat fishing, but from the shore. Now down on the south coast, there's several places good for fishing, and I thought, well, now what really makes them good for fishing? When you sit down and think about it, it's tidal flow. I'll show you what I mean. Let's just say, take a regular car atlas. Loads of people are gonna have car atlases. Of course, you can go online as well. Just so I can just show you just a rough guide in my sort of theory. I'm gonna find somewhere, like, here we go. Let's call it Chesil Beach, which on the south coast of the UK is known as a sort of big fish mark. It can be good for really a few anglers. A lot of anglers sometimes struggle there. But the point is, is it's well known as a good fish holding area. And the reason being is this, I'll show you on the map here. Now here you can see Chesil Beach, it is actually miles and miles and miles long. It runs way, way down on shingle all the way down the coast. And there's some good beach fishing all the way down there. Um, but generally it's the actual bank of Chesil Beach itself, which is so popular. And the reason for this is that big island there called Portland, Portland, well, the end is called Portland Bill and the island's called Portland itself. So the tide comes around the outside of that. But that gives me the idea, where else can I get some good flow? I want to try Hailing Island, which has Chichester Harbour emptying here, Langston Harbour emptying there. Only two channels for it to come out in. So therefore, when it does ebb after those lagoons are filled up, it absolutely pours out of it. In the centre, though, where a lot of people fish, there's not going to be much flow, is there? It's not going to be too much flow in the centre there, and therefore I feel the bait wouldn't uh, wouldn't get much smell off the bait. But more towards the edge of the banks there, I feel, would be good. And let me show you what I mean here. So to give you some sort of idea of what I'm talking about, I thought, there's only so much I can get on a car map, isn't there? We need to see something in the water. So those two banks where those estuaries are, all that water pouring out, the tide's so strong it creates sandbars. They've been there for millennia. But those sandbars also restrict the water, therefore creating a current, not just from the current that creates the sandbars, but from a circulating effect on the inside of those sandbars. I'm gonna show you on my lowers, on my boat sounder, I've got my old caravan battery here, so I've got some power for 12 volt. I can wire it up with a inline fuse as well, and at least show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's just look at the chart, because obviously the sound is not going to work. There's the island of Portland, so you can see that lovely big beach there. It's uh, got good tidal flow there, but the one I was showing you at, where I'm looking at, maybe tries Hayley Island, just in here. Now, this one is fitted with uh, a platinum chart card. Bear with me, here you can see the channel there. The channel here, now I know just in here is what we call the winner banks and there's a bar created by all this water rushing out of here through these channels. Right, there we go. Now we're cooking on gas. Here is the land and the eastern side. This green is where it dries out. 
and I'm figuring around about here, this rushes out and obviously rushes in. This dries out, this is a sandbar, and if I just pull it to the other end of the island, wowee, look at that one. There's the channel that runs in and out, and there's a big, big sandbar there. So here, while they do get fish, it's very, very strong, especially on the spring tide. So I'm figuring somewhere along the inside between the two would be there, if I could pull out there, just show you. There in the middle, I think there's probably not much tidal flow, so therefore there's not much smell dissipation off your bait. So I'm aiming to come back here, let's say around about there. I want some of that bank there. I want some of the influence of this bank. So water rushes around as it ebbs this way, just along here. I can pull right in there to show you this. These chart cards are really good. It gives you drop offs as well there, you know, the little contours. So I'm figuring there now, because I've zoomed in, I just want to show you this. There's there's a sandbank, right? That's a really, really big sandbank. Probably goes out, I don't know, let's call it half a mile. But if you come along here, it's a regular even beach, isn't it? Except there's a bump there. We know there's no GPS fix. There's a bump there. And I'm wondering if that extra shallow area pushes tide either side. I'm going to try and find an area and just guesstimate that along there. What I really suppose could do is take GPS coordinate off of this and then tie it into the land. Would that be a way to do it? So at least I'll get a handheld GPS as well. We do take this GPS and put it in my in my cigarette lighter in my car and find out exactly, exactly where that bump is. So that's the theory, guys. All that remains now is switch off here and get down the water. Well, I'm actually down here on the beach now. I'm sort of just inside those two bars. I was going to go right down to the other bar, but with these big spring tides, I'm figuring there'd just be too much current ripping through there. And I can see here, even with the wind and the waves, there is a pull to the right where it's ebbing to the right. So I'm figuring, I think I'll just tough it out here. And first bait I'm going to send out on my heavy rod is a whole Weymouth freshly caught squid. It is, well, it's not whole, it's a whole head, but they tell me it's very, very good. Right, let me show you. I've got it on a single hook pulley rig. I'm using one of my homemade grip leads there with the rubber bands. And there is a kachunking great big head and tentacles. And what I've done is I've relashed all the tentacles, which are back here, the catching tentacles. I've folded them backwards and forwards. And I've got to lob this one out and the fingers crossed, something comes along. It's a pleasant evening. Doesn't appear to be any other anglers out, hardly surprising, it's pretty cold and they tell me in the tackle shop when I bought the ragworm, it's been dire. So I feel a blank might be coming, but listen, you've got to be in it to win it guys. Let's get this kitty out there. Okay, a bit of an experiment now. What I'm going to be doing, I've got a rod called a Super Bass, which is Conoflex one, not selling this, 30, 40 years old. Only throws about three or four ounces, and I'm going to be fishing on that. A lightish grip way. I don't want to go far, I want to fish a bait close in. The actual bait is going to be three quarters of a whole herring there. Elasticated on, this is a fresh herring, it's not frozen, well it's frozen, but it was it was caught and frozen fresh down in Minehead. I'm going to send that out and I want to leave it out literally for the duration I'm here if I can. And I'm going to be putting in the next groin over with a sand spike. Many of you have seen these, they use them a lot in the States. If you guys are beginners and you don't want to, you know, invest in a tripod, you've only got one rod, you don't have to go and buy a tripod. You get a piece of waste pipe like this, cut a slant on it, just cut a notch in the top there just to take the you know the angle of the reel the reel seat and you can push it and wiggle it in the gravel or the sand that's why they call them sand spikes i'm going to put this in the next groin over there's nobody here and it's just pot luck i'm going to sort of leave it there as long as i can 
And you can see there's absolutely oh, one leg over, I think, the other in a, in a week or two. So this one I'm going to be fishing with my main rod to the tripod. So I'm just going to put this sand spike so just here and cast to the middle of the bay there. And it's sort of hot luck. Sometimes you have to put these in at an angle, like this, and then gradually straighten them up and twist them at the same time. And this one being a being as it's a big old bait, I think what I do is keep that drag really light. I'm not even sure I'm gonna clip that because I, I want to fish close, I want to get it in close. Mind you, there's a nice big angle clip there. I'm sure it'll release in mid-air anyway, so there you go. Just gonna go to the middle of the beach here, throw it slightly left because the wind is picking up and blowing this way. And the tide's falling all the time. I just throw it out, maybe 40 yards, something like that. Here we go. Don't need a booty. That was nearly a booty. Okay, okay, be like that then. It's gonna be one of those days. That's gone. That's all I want it there. Just at the back of those waves here. You see the wave building? I want it just at the back. And you know, there could be a, a fish coming between these groins looking for food. And hopefully they might see that. I'm thinking maybe a bass. Just a bonus rod. Throw it out there. Now if I put it down there, you can see the real seat just drops down. This one doesn't because I haven't cut big enough. It takes a smaller reel, but it drops in there and it stops it swiveling around. It won't, it won't matter for me like this, for sure. I'm just going to back that drag like that. That should do it. So a little bit of tension up there. Just see a little bit. I'm just tugging the line. There's a bit of flow there. Just make sure that sand spikes up there. Right, I think some small hooks need to go out. It is cold. Hence the fact, no other anglers. Old age pensioner takes his life into his hands. Ah, oh, new kneecaps, please. I'm going to check this one. I'm doing this now, guys, because it will be it will be dark very, very shortly. Now, also gives me a bit of experiment. As you can see, I've got my top of my rod just painted with a bit of old white gloss paint. But some of you might see me make this out of a reflective uh, highway type jacket. So it'd be interesting when it gets dark to see if that does actually light up any more than the white when I get the uh, pitch black of, of dark and I put either a headlight, headlight or head torch on it or my camera light. I've got it on three rods. Okay, this rig I'm going to try and just use, um, I think I call it a place rig. Hopefully you can see that against the uh, against the skyline there, but I'm using just a plain bomb with a long tail, not clipped down. Bait is a piece of sand hill, half a sand hill and a small ragworm, half a sand hill and a small ragworm. Now they've got quite a long, look, quite a long snood or drop tail on them. In fact, I've forgotten to slide down the rubber stop here. There, it doesn't really, it stops the bait blasting up the line when you cast, but I'm not gonna be casting that this hard. The thing is, I don't really sort of need it. That one's got a clip on it to stop it. To, you can actually clip these up if you want. I think you clip it up there. Too many clips for me. I like throwing these out loose and I know they go out fine. I'm gonna throw this one straight out the middle there. It goes where it goes, folks. So I'm figuring the tie's pulling to the right. These got grip leads on them. So this should be fixed and not move. This one's got a bomb on it, so it's, it might bump. It might just bump around in the tie, which I'm not too worried about. If I can get out there. And it should go over there to the right and just swing around. It's about 70 yards out, not very far. I'm trying to fish a little bit closer. I've tried heave hoeing it all out and I've not really done any good the last few beach trips. So with darkness coming, I'm going to start dropping stuff short, I think. A lot of times when our people catch fish really, really close, I can feel that bumping. And I know I'm on clean ground here, he says, hopefully. That can go in. So I'm all set up. I've got some baits out there, people. I've got something out there. 
I'm going to chuck out the old shotgun spinner rod and just throw it just literally round the edge there with some real small hooks on them. Maybe a segment of uh, sand hill or maybe even a segment of worm. The black clouds cometh. I can see them easing over here. And they did say the occasional shower. That looks a bit more than an occasional shower. I might have to get the, the old tent up. And over there, you want to see with this camera, but the waves are starting to break a bit. Where the tide's dropping, there's a big, big sandbar out there. Out there, and up the other end, it was one of those two ends. That's why I want to be quite close to the sandbars. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a bit of tidal flow here, and that will send scent off of the bait. That's the theory behind me being near these sandbars. Goodness me, if I had a fish for every theory, I'd be catching loads. For the small hooks, I've got like a place we've got I've made up. Not that I'm going to catch any place in the middle of winter, but you never know. This one's even got, if I just untangle it, he's got a little spinner blade there you might be able to see. I just figured there might be a bit of tide to move it, flash it, and an absolutely miniature little grip lead. I shouldn't think it's more than three ounces. It's one of the smallest ones I've, uh, I've come across actually. Let's move those green locking beads down. Make sure you get these beads sleeves into those slots there like that and that should just hold it. I only want to go close because don't forget it's all about wondering if the fish are going to come in close with the darkness. So let's lob this one out there I'll put it in the shotgun holder. It's only a spinning rod and it's just a bonus and bait wise, sorry guys didn't tell you about the bait. The bait is squid tentacles from fresh squid you can see those there and ragworm i'm not going to blast it i want to get it out there intact it's not clipped down it's just a straight throw i'm aiming to go down the side of the, this groin here throw it out and i should be clear of my other lines the tide's falling all the time i can get out there quickly Oop, that will be nice 40 yards that's all i want that's where stuff like small black bream whiting anything like that's going to be I feel a little bit closer in pretty flat to see I thought it would be a little bit more movement in it than this but hey ho I'm here now it's sandwich time it's going to be dark shortly the lights are coming on over there on the Isle of Wight the Isle of Wigget as somebody said and that just slots in here so it's a plastic tube I'll just show it to you it's just taped and tied on plastic tube Put it in there, I could throw a spinning rod out for nothing. Cost me nothing, cost me nothing, provided I don't look if I'm going for bigger fish, which is rare nowadays, I just film and I just go for anything. Um, I just fish the two up here, the two main rods out there, keep them separated. But this I can sort of throw through the middle if you can see, it's just a bonus fun rod. And very often I've caught small fish on that and some halfway decent fish as well, just on a spinning rod. It just gives me a bit of entertainment value. But that's the one I want to see go over. I mean, I'm virtually all these rods. I'm virtually having a match here on my own, aren't I? Hello, I thought I had a tap on that. Must be waves. I'm going to move this down. Now, this is where it's tricky. When you do a walk back technique with a tripod, you back all these drags off here and you can walk it back like this. It ain't so easy going down. As you go down, the line sinks, so I'll probably do that on the next cast. Time for sandwiches, I feel. Another boat coming in there. They've all been out cod fishing for the elusive cod. There was a competition apparently a couple of weeks ago. Was it two, two boats? Uh, two, um, two boats, Graham. Wake up. Over 150 people for two days. So that's 300 effectively people for two days and one four pound cod won it. Wow, that's impressive. What chance have I got down here? I can't get any more than my rods out here if I fish with 300 baits out here if they're out in the uh, fi fishing zone the channel zone they got far more chance than I have oh, good old deck chair people say why did you buy yourself a good one I'll tell you why I don't buy because this thing weighs ounces this old chair you know when I'm eating this just waiting for a, a bite I always come out like many anglers you come out full of hope the British shore fishing when you come out full of hope that the fish are going to go mad and do you know what? It is the state of the beach fishing. Now, I'm not talking about rock fishing, uh, what I call feature areas where there are still a few big fish around, but most guys can't get out there. They just want to 
finish work, go and soak some worms, just put a bait in order and try and catch a few small fish. It is dire in the UK. The last two years, this is the end of 2018, the last two years have been pretty shocking. Now, listen, that's not me bitching, that's not me bitching, that's me talking to other ordinary anglers like myself up and down the beach. Not the big fish specialist guys who go out four o'clock in the morning with giant baits and fish three days. They're always going to get the biggest fish, always. As they say, it's 10% of the anglers that catch 90% of the fish. And I can tell you, of that 10%, maybe only 1% get the really big fish that you see on Facebook and stuff like that and of course the majority of us don't catch too much at all. My claim to fame is that off this beach many years ago I had a cod of I think it was 11 and a quarter pounds I think it was 11 2 11 4 I think it was on limpet and worm if I recall many years ago but it's, it's really really tough here fishing in the UK it really is tough you just go in it's like sort of throwing the dice every time you come are you going to catch anything at all? Whether it is trawling that's done it, or the bycatch, the discards, the fact that sometimes foreign trawlers come right up to our coastline trawling, I don't know, but it definitely, for the beach angler, is not good. You know, you've got to be pretty dedicated, or like me, just stupid. But I still like the freedom of beach fishing. I come out, throw a bay out in the water, Hey ho, enjoy the fresh air. I can have a cook up, which I will do later on. And you know, no rules, regulations, all the freshwater stuff. One fisher I went to had a ball, you had to stand there for like 10 minutes and read all the rules and regulations. It makes you wonder why are those fish so special. Perhaps you shouldn't be fishing for them if they're that special. Well, remain motionless rod tops. Big baits and small baits alike remain untouched at the moment. I think I'm gonna move my whole kit down because the tide is falling. I can go down to that piece of shingle there fairly safe in the knowledge that I won't get washed away. Um, obviously I need to recast as well. And I will be checking that big herring or half three quarter size herring just in case the crabs have chewed it all away, in which case I'm gonna be rebaiting again. But I won't be able to use that small camera too much, but I have got a camera floodlight with me. And fingers crossed if I do get anything remotely looking like a fish, I'll be able to show it to you guys and at least get something of it. And I've got my headlamp, a little small headlamp, not a very powerful one, not enough to film by. But um, really any minute now I should be expecting to get a few rod rattles. Right, I think I'll move this gear down now. There we go, boys. Let's get clipped up. Nice whitey. Let's see if I can get the mic on for you. And it's getting dark. Well, it is dark. I was just sitting there, just sort of dozing off. Bang, bang, bang. I thought that's that spinning rod. You know, I talked to you about the spinning rod really close, close in. Let's switch it off for you. There we go, you should be able to see this one, the light there. I said to you about uh, just throwing this spin rod in really close, 30 yards out, it saved the blank for me. And there's always a chance something else might come along as well. Let's get this one back, nice whitey. And that was on that combo bait. You might be able to see it there. Wow. These baits really aren't chewed, I might have just got lucky there with one fish. You see that there, I don't know where you're going to see this there. I've got a squid tentacle just tipping off ragworm. That one's untouched, that one's untouched. Might be a bit chewed that one, but you know what, I think I can send it out again. So it's only a bonus, but listen, fish is a fish. Small, probably no more than a three ounce, but the wind's getting up, so I don't know how long this three ounce is gonna last. I'm gonna get it straight back out there, and the tide is falling away fast. I've got to move all my rods down. One thing I will say, where I glued that like flecked a light off of the um, off the off the road vest. I'm going to call it the highways vest. That actually is work one on two rods, but not the other. And I don't know why. So it's sort of double success. Right, let's get this rod out. You probably won't get anything. I'm trying to turn the power up. That's all I can get. 
Let's walk down there a bit. The wind is pretty picked right up. Unfortunately, I've tried to get my shelter up over nightmares. It's just gone from sort of mild west of the airflow right round to southeast and it's caught me unawares. I'm just hoping you got some of this people. There we go. The dogfish and a nice white in there. I've no idea what angle the camera's at. I'll try and alter it a bit for you. I have to leave them here. I've got everything balanced people. I'm going to turn my headlight off. Well that is a bit of a result. It will be if I don't knock all the camera over. So there we go. Nice dogfish and a white in there. It's uh, taken a turn for the worse of weather. But there you go. Double shot. So there is stuff on the feed out there. And that's that double combo bait of ragworm and half a sand eel. I remember last winter that was very good for me as well. And look, the tides aren't good at all for me. Let's get this dogfish off. There he goes. Look, yes, we know it's only a dogfish, but I tell you what, gratefully accepted. And Mr. Whiting down here somewhere. That wind is a blowing. So there we go, people. Oh, yes. A bit of a result. I wonder if he's finding that tidal flow. I'm going to get these guys back. Well, maybe you'll be able to see, guys, a couple of the rods with the, especially that spinning rod. It's really lit up. It's between the uh, tip ring and the first ring down. Nothing on my three quarters of a whole herring up there. Nothing at all on that one. It's just the way it is, but it's out there. I've heaved it out again. About 40 yards, let it sit there. And it hasn't been chewed up. But up here, you should be able to see I've uh, put up base camp and I've had to tie it down. It doesn't look windy, but it is windy. It's a bit of a breeze. So I've got base camp in there trying to keep my uh, stuff dry. I mean, they're dead handy, these things. And if my, uh, my headlight goes out, obviously I've got the camera light, which is basically a godsend for the wind's gone right around the south easterly now not the world's most pleasant and I'm dropping down further towards I've got about 30 minutes before slack water so I'm going to leave base camp here and I'm sure to have to move it up again if I'm going to stay till about 8.30 two hours of flood it might might just be a few more fish about on the flood still I've had something guys at least I've had something i have something else in a minute it's going to go in a frying pan Oh, there we go boys. Oh, I can't swing it towards me, I'm trying to film at the same time. What they seem to like, oh don't put the reel down there Graham. They seem to like, let's put this up here. Not the squid, but they like the sand eel and ragworm wraps. I feel like I'm making a sort of fishy baguette for them, it's like a sort of Sort of sandwich bar here, isn't it, really? Well, look at the wind blowing. It's getting rougher. It's getting rougher, boys. How many of these have I got left? Not many. Oh, the squid's still chilled in there. So I'm just going to concentrate on sandals now.
Well, that's right, guys. I don't think I'm going to die of starvation. Because if I can cook those sausages before the tide comes in, I'll be okay. It's a bit of a race against the water. And then I've still got to fry the eggs. I think I could have done with a little bit more cooking oil, but they're getting there. They're getting there slowly. Unfortunately, out here, the tide's getting there slowly as well. It's definitely something about cooking in the outdoors. You know, it tastes better. I don't know that it's because it's burned or whether it tastes of Teflon. I'm not sure, but it is quite something to be out on the beach, having a cook up, waiting for the tide to uh, wash a little campfire away. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I'm calling it Bushcraft on the Beach. Is it me or does that look like a face with two eyes at the top and four rows of teeth? It looks like some sort of spooky face. Not nice when you're out on a beach on your own. It's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad. Little bits of... Little bits of crunchy sand in it, but that's good. It's good for plaque for the teeth and the fillings. It's good for the dentist's business. Keeps him busy, more fillings. Ah, well, that was very acceptable. Sausage and eggs on the beach. But there's a little something extra for me. If I can get my lighter. I got a little something, a little special treat. If it will stay alight. Now then, how about boys? To finish off the session, a little mulled wine in a metal container, so this one should heat up. There we go, put it on the top. Don't knock it over, Graham. I've only got a little bit uh, of tea left in the flask. We had a little bit of mulled wine, just a little bit of cup full left over, and I said to the wife, don't waste that, don't waste that. She said, don't worry, I'm gonna drink it. And I managed to grab it from her. I'm gonna heat it up, I'm gonna have hot mulled wine. That is something I don't think I've had for a couple of years on the beach. Never lose your light, you should put it in the Ziploc. All nice and cozy in here. Outside, not so cozy, the wind's really blowing. I just want enough gas left in here to heat this up. I don't want it bo so boiling that it takes my moustache off. And I don't want the gas to go out, obviously, because I want it warm. It's got to be better than a flask of rancid tea, isn't it? It's been in there for about six hours. Yucky. I want a couple more fish. I've done okay. I feel I've done okay. Nothing big come. But that's the way it is in UK fishing. I could get one any minute now. I could get one, couldn't I? You can probably see the uh, the camera quivering. <laughs> well, that's because he's on a stake outside a single monopod and it's blowing in the wind and it's lovely in here. But once you go outside, it's horrible. You probably hear the waves in the background now. It's coming in big time. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to cancel tomorrow. I was going to go all the way to that other beach, Chesil, and fish down. I don't think I'm going to do it. I've just got to check this wind. It's southeasterly. Maybe I'll give Mackie a call and see what he says. Oh, I see. A little bit, a little mist, a little aroma coming from the herbs and spices in there. Just wafting up through the little bivouac thing I've got here. I don't know what they call these. We used to call them beach buddies years ago. I did when I drove down up at East Oak. I saw uh, two rods up, guys with long rods, like 15 footers. No, 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 no. The rods were 15 footers. The men, the guys, weren't 15 feet. And I can see there's a, some lights up there. I don't know, there might be people working or uh, they might be the fishermen. I'm looking forward to this. I do not need a bite at this moment in time. I just need that to heat up. I'm looking at them out there, pretty motionless, which I find bizarre because I was getting, whoa. I just had a massive bite, guys. I'm gonna show you while that's heating up. I'm gonna show you if you can on the spinning rod might not hear anything that spinning rod absolutely whacked down that has to be there he is again biting on it there's the bite oh man you'd be hard pushed to miss that wouldn't you be hard pushed to miss that bite 
Oh, I'm glad I've been able to show you some fish and a bite. Should be a flooding tide, and yeah, it's pulling to the right, so it must be the wind. But I have taken that straight uh, tail bomb off and put a uh, grip lead on as well. Well, let's go and see if my mould wine. What does it do? I know it heats up. Does it mull? Does mould wine mull? I don't know. Somebody out there, a mould wine expert, tell me, what does it mean? I mean, it's just hot, sort of spicy wine. But what is mould wine? I don't know, apart from nice and acceptable. Let's get back to camp. I'll tell you what, get out of this wind. There it is. I feel, oh, it smells absolutely gorgeous, guys. Lovely. I'm gonna have my mulled wine before it all evaporates. Put it on my leg, just test how hot it is. Hole in the trousers. It smells lovely. Wow, hot. Mmm, beautiful. But it's gotta cool down a second. Uh, some guys ask me, they say, what's this great light you have in your hand, this one? This one here, this is my head torch. It's just a cheap one for about 10 pounds, runs on batteries, I guess, uh, triple A's. It goes off, okay, I'll put that down. It has one power, double power, triple power. Obviously I keep it on economy, because I'm so tight, so I click it down and have it on the first one. This one is my camera light, which would clip on top of the camera. You probably can't see it, it has a clip. But it has a, like a 100 pound camera battery in there. It takes uh, treble A's as well, it takes rechargeables. But I just by pure luck, the camera, when I bought my big camera, the Sony, this battery actually fitted this pack, it's brilliant. And it has a graduation here, look, I can go up and down with it. And it is, yeah, bright. It goes right down the beach, it runs for absolutely ages. I think Mike got this quite cheap, but listen, the, tor the, the torch, the light's cheap, and the battery's not, it's hundred and something pounds. I'm gonna wind that fishing in a minute. Well oh, guys, I've got the camera on full power, and I think I'm gonna wheel this one in. Let's see if we can't, see if he's got a customer on there, because it was absolutely hammering. What I did was leave it out there in case there was a cod or a bass or something that might have picked off the live bait. Feels like there's at least one fish on there, but he was going absolutely banging and hammering the rod, absolutely crashing at it. And I did think they might, you know, because he's struggling away, he picks up the vibrations of the other fish, a bass or a cob might pick it up, but not to be. I think there's a fish on here. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yes, indeedy. There you go guys, small whiting. I think there's a bigger fish on, because these are all chewed, but there's a little white in there. Do you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was something after him, because he was actually, he was going berserk. Right, my mic, microphone lead. I think I'm gonna have a couple more throw outs. I've got plenty of bait. I might as well tough it out. It's windy, but it's fishable. Well, peeps, just holding the camera light now, it's so windy. There's another nice whiting there. It's pretty well howling, it's a big, sort of four to five now, the camera's shaking on the stand there, so I've got to call it quits, I've had quite a lot of whiting now, some I haven't filmed, um, and we'll give it maybe one more cast out, and I think it's getting cold now, and I'm getting cold, so we called it quits. Good session though. Actually, turned out, 
bit better than I thought it would do. Could have been on a blank, couldn't I? Well, there we go. I'm still catching some really nice big whites in there, guys. Switch that off for you. I think that's off. Still catching some really nice big whites in there. Not bad old session fishing, really, on the worms. I'm going to finish off the worms. I've got about one more cast left. Nothing on the big baits. I think I'm getting chewed by the whiting already on those. So, not a bad old session, really. Can't grumble. I'm pleased with it. We'll see you next time and listen. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, but hit the subscribe button on TA Outdoors and our one because we want to get to 200,000 on the fishing show. Mike's on three quarters of a million, I think. Anyway, don't go away because you never know, there might be something else coming up on the Totally Awesome Tackle Shack. Meanwhile, I'm going to get this guy unhooked and have my proverbial last cast. Well, boys, you must know me and my last cast. How about this for a pair of giant size? Whiting. Let's turn that headlight off for you. What about that for a pair of whiting? One of, they're both keepers, those I'd say. Look at the size of those. Really nice. Nice big eating whiting, but I don't need them. I've got to send them back. I'll be pleased to catch those in a boat, guys, to be honest. Look. Decent sized, big, big whiting. Real joke. Probably some of the biggest whiting I think I've caught off the beach this year. Let's get them back and, well I mustn't have another cast, but I must not have another cast, but I told you don't go away and the Tackle Shack will be coming. Yes, it's Tackle Shack time and what on earth can I be doing with this sort of high waist jacket? Well, I want that reflective strip off there, so I'm using the point of the scissors just to, just to release the uh, stitches there. I don't want to cut the yellow jacket, you never know what I might want a jacket. Of course, I run the risk of being run over on the road now with no reflective tape on there. It's just a spare one I had. So there you can see there's two sides to this reflective tape. One side's got little sparkly bits on it. So that is the side that obviously sends back the reflector light back to you, I'm guessing. Anyway, for me to do this, I just measured uh, roughly from the inside of the tip ring across to the next intermediate ring down and I just try it as neatly as possible to cut the right length. And now obviously this one's got a bit of stitching to it, so I cut the stitching off, and I wanna you know, measure roughly and make sure I'm gonna try and roll it around there and glue it on with super glue and then cut the surplus off. Now I don't want that stitching edge there, so I'm gonna cut off as straight as an edge as I can get along there with a nice, neat, crisp pair of scissors. You want a nice straight cut. Cuts pretty easily, this stuff, to be fair. And as you can see, just enough to go round about maybe one, one and a half turns uh, around the whole blank. Get some super glue, just run a very light skimming of dabs of super glue along there, making sure that it doesn't soak through and stick to my pool table. And then the stitching edge side, I'm putting down first, just dab it on gently. Do not get stuck with this super glue. It's called super glue for a reason. It's super and it dries very fast. It doesn't take long to go off. And you just sort of, I just brush my fingers along like that. Generally, I just wet on my fingers, spit on them or something, and that stops it sticking to your fingers. And just keep moving all the time. Eventually, it will take. And there you go, I've got the first one on. Then I run down another uh, just line of super glue there, really, just along that, that overlapping edge there. Pull it around really as tight as I can get. And the super glue seems to tack down pretty well on this material. Just get that shape as tight to the blank as you can. I don't want any sort of ridges or bumps on there. I'm not, I'm not paranoid. Look, this is all just an experiment, people. A total experiment. I have no trouble seeing the, the white tips, but I thought it'd be nice to have reflective tips. Then once that's dry, I just keep doing a similar situation with a bit of super glue. And then I get a sharp knife, taking great care. This is a kitchen knife. And just trim off the surplus as neatly as I can. I guess you could use scissors, but I thought I'd get better off with a with a with a sharp knife and then I'm using some two-part epoxy aerodite because there's obviously a leading edge where I've tacked it over on the super glue and I can't really dab the super glue down with my finger or stick to the rod top so I just wet my finger with a bit of spit and push some aerodite down there it makes it nice and smooth and there you go job done a reflective rod top <laughs>